There is a school of thought that says if you want a fast, discreet BMW, you shouldn't buy an M car, you should buy an Alpina. Here we have the latest one, the B3 by Turbo. But is it more than just a chaffed up 3 Series? And is it rather less than an M3? Let us find out. The first thing you have to know about this Alpina, and in fact, any Alpina, is that it's a road car. So we have to judge the car on the road. I don't think it's fair to go to a track and smoke it and do lap times and things, because people that buy Alpinas are looking to use them to get about in their everyday lives. They're supposed to be very fast cars that are discreet, that get you from A to B very, very quickly without raising too much attention. Hence the reason this one doesn't have the sticker set all over it, although I'm a bit of a sucker for the sticker set. So what do we have then? Well, we have the current 3 Series four-door saloon car, a standard shell, a twin turbocharged engine based on the N55 block, lots of trick stuff going on that we'll explain through some of the detail shots in a minute. And the result is, I suppose, in normal English, a kind of sub M3 that's supposed to be a bit more comfortable, but is naffing fast. This car maxes out at 190 miles an hour. That's a 3 Series BMW that'll do 190 miles an hour. That is very, very fast. So what's it like on the road? Well, it's a mixture of the sublime and the slightly frustrating. There's nothing outwardly disappointing here, but let me tell you about the good bit. The good bit is that it's supple. There's less spring rate, there's a bit less damping. The whole car's a bit more supple and amenable to bumpy roads, which means it's great in the UK. And on the motorway especially, it's superb. You can tell it's been developed for the autobahn. On UK roads, B roads and A roads. What I find is that with the dampers, there are two damper settings here, with the dampers set to comfort, the car's supple, but it doesn't have that much support. You can easily get the car moving around a bit too much, even on A roads. So it feels better in sport, but in sport you lose that sort of luxurious, creamy finish to the ride. So for me, there's probably, for the UK, a setting somewhere between comfort and sport. So that's frustrating because in the past, Alpina have been great at just getting one suspension setting that works, and that's it. Having said that, we're running a 20-profile tyre on a 20-inch wheel on this car. So there's only so much ride we can expect from it. It rides in comfort better than a Sport 320D. That's still something, isn't it? Powertrain. It's a bit special, this. A bit special. Twin turbocharged, so BMW's gone down the single turbocharger route. Alpina's stuck with this twin turbocharged thing, and it does really work, because we have not a very turbocharged feeling engine. We get all the benefit of the torque that comes through, but then we get great throttle response in the way that the M5 has that kind of unturbocharged feel, the way that you can go at the throttle mid-corner and it responds, this car does the same thing. And that elevates it above the kind of M135i, 435i powertrain to me. You get that lovely ZF 8-speed gearbox as well, so what a result all round. The noise is lovely because you've got the Akrapovich, I didn't say Akrapovich, Akrapovich standard Alpina exhaust, which is lovely, below 2,500 RPM in comfort, the valves stay closed, then open above it in sport, open the whole time. It's a great BMW straight six noise, and it's totally organic, and it sounds quite like an M135i, which must prove that the people that engineered the fake sound in that car did a rather good job. <laughs> Now, it is, of course, ludicrous that a small saloon car with 410 horsepower doesn't really grab the headlines because the latest C63 is called the Edition 507, and you can kind of guess why. This car is 1,650 kilograms-ish. Not that heavy, even though it is on the road. But it has 443 foot-pounds of torque, and its performance is brisk, seriously brisk on the road. There's always power and torque where you want it. To me, it feels just as fast as a normal C63 on the road. And this one's fitted with an optional locking rear differential, which means that it's got a whole world of fun performance waiting. And it's at this point that I have to say we have a slight problem with the whole Alpina road thing, because this Alpina is actually quite lively. And I think the only way we can show you just how lively it is, is to go to a track. So let's see what the Alpina's like moving around a bit. 
Now, traditionally, Alpine had preferred not to use locking differentials, but in a 410 horsepower rear wheel drive saloon car, you kind of need one. It's still an option, but this car has it, and it's a beautifully engineered thing from well respected motorsport types Drexler. 30% lock under power, 20% when coasting. As you can see, it makes for one of the most driftable, controllable, and plain enjoyable sideways machines I've driven in years. It's interesting this, because even though oversteer itself is a completely pointless measure of a car's performance, the manner in which a car slides continues so much about its demeanour in normal use. As a rule, turbocharging doesn't help skidding because you want instant throttle response for tiny adjustments, but the B3's twin turbos seem to spool when you think about moving your right foot. It's fast too, 0 to 62 in 4.2, 0 to 125 in 14 dead. Easy drifts point to a great chassis balance and kind breakaway characteristics, and the B3 has those too. In fact, the more time I spent with this car, the more I wished it could lose the adjustable dampers and come in an estate body style, which incidentally it can, then it would suit me rather nicely. In left-hand drive markets, you could have it with four-wheel drive too. Now in the past with Alpina, the compelling dynamic argument went sour the moment you discussed prices. Not anymore, really. This is a discreet saloon car capable of 190 miles an hour, and yet it costs £54,950, which isn't much more than a heavily specced 335i, and you really cannot compare the two. Alpina, you see, is actually at its best when it's making BMW's own products look a bit ordinary. The new M3 will be faster and more exciting than this B3, but it will need to be exceptional to be a more appealing everyday car.